we're moving along in our discussion of probability and statistics, uh, we're now moving toward uh, back toward what we talked to and in, in, uh, talked about at the beginning of chapter seven, and uh, we're going to talk about the basics of probability. And um, in section eight one, we're going to talk about what are called discrete random variables. So. Um, uh, let's start out with by defining what they are. We can say that a random variable x is a rule that assigns a real number to each outcome of a probability experiment. So, uh, so um, it assigns a number based on the value of x. So, think of it this way: it's even though it's called a random variable, it isn't really random. Uh, now, there's two types of of random variables. We can say that a random variable is discrete if its set of outcomes is either finite or countably infinite. Now, now by finite, we mean a definite number uh, where the x values are, are a certain number that we can count. Or by count, countably infinite means they can be written in a sequence. Here's the first one, here's the second one, here's the third one, and so on. Uh, the other type of random variable is, is called the continuous random variable. We'll talk about that at the end of the chapter here, but uh, in general terms, you have to have calculus to be able to uh, solve general problems in with uh, continuous random variables. So we're going to focus on the discrete ones here. Uh, in slide number three, we can talk about what, uh, the discrete probability distribution. And we can say that a distribution is a discrete, uh, a, excuse me, a distribution of a discrete random variable x is a discrete probability distribution if two conditions are met. First, all the probability values have to be between 0 and 1 inclusively. Now remember what we're talking about here. When, whenever we say the word distribution in statistics, we're talking about a table. So we're looking for a probability table here. The left column of the table will have the values of the random variable x. The right column will have their associated probabilities. So uh, first, we, we have to make sure all the probabilities are between 0 and 1, one of our basic rules of probability. And second, if you add up all the probabilities in the right-hand column, you have to get exactly one. You have to get exactly one. That's what we mean by this. The sum of all the probabilities of the values of the random variable x must be equal to one. And um, we can say that a probability mass function is a discrete probability distribution for which the probabilities are computed using a function. Sometimes we can compute a discrete probability distribution for data, but sometimes we can give, be given an actual mathematical function, and that can help us find the, uh, uh, the uh, probability distribution for it. All right, in slide number four, we have an example of a, of a, of a probability mass function. We can say that for the formula given below, uh, now notice what we have here. The probability mass function is uh, the probability that x takes on the values of x is 1 over 55 times x. And notice, so here's our probability mass function, and then the values of our random variable are 5, 10, 15, and 20. So we want to make a table of the values of, uh, for the probability distribution. And then we want to determine if the table meets the two criteria of a probability distribution. All right. So let's get at it with that. So here's our solution now. Uh, first recall that our probability uh, mass function, I'll just call that P of X, is 1 over 55 times X for X being 5, 10, 15, and 20. So in the left-hand column, we'll put our values of X. And in the right-hand column, we'll put the corresponding probabilities. All right, so think of what we need to do. For every value of x, we need to plug it into this little function here and get an answer. So if we put in 5, we get what? 1 55th times 5. Well, that's what? 1 11th when you reduce that. And 
we can do um, um, 155th times 10. Let's see, we can reduce that by a 5 then, right? And we get 2 elevenths for that. If you put in 15, we end up getting 3 elevenths. And finally, if you put in 20, again, we can divide by, we can reduce this by a 5 and get 4 elevenths. So here's our probability distribution uh, for this probability mass function that we have. Now, in part B, let's get, let, we can do that over here. We can uh, test the two criteria. First, all probability values are between zero and one. So the first criteria is met. Now the second one, let's see, if we add up all the probability values, that means we want to add up 1 11th plus 2 11ths plus 3 11ths plus 4 11ths. So let's see, they all have a common denominator, so that makes it easy. The denominator and the answer is going to be 11. So if we just add up the numerators, we have 1 plus 2 plus 3, that's 6, plus 4, that's 10. Well, not equal to 1, is it? So let's go ahead and uh, make a conclusion here. We'll interpret the solution. So the distribution the distribution is not a probability distribution. Yeah, so so we found the we, we found the uh, the dis, this distribution table, but it ends up because the sum of the probabilities is not exactly one. We can't say that this is a probability distribution, so we couldn't compute probabilities using it. Now um, let me let's just go go ahead and, and look at a couple of notes here. Um, notice here we could also. Um, make a graph of the probability values. And notice I did it for uh, this probability function here, probability mass function, x minus, x minus 4 over 14 for the values uh, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So notice here, we can get this histogram of values using a probability distribution and that, 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 that histogram is simply called a probability histogram. So we can have a graphical view of what a probability distribution looks like. Again, this is a different problem here and, uh, than what we did in the example. And, but you, the, the point is, we can draw a probability histogram just like we did in, in, in previous sections before. All right, now let's talk about how we actually compute probabilities from a uh, probability distribution. In slide number six, we can say that for a probability mass function, uh, p of x, that the probability that our random variable, in this case it's a discrete random variable, lies between two points a and b, is simply the sum of the probabilities beginning at a and going up to b. All right, so we simply add them up as we go along, and that gives us this uh, this probability between two points. All right, so let's take a, a look at an example here. Um, how about this? In 1997, uh, slide number seven, uh, the number of school activities in which at least one parent of a child in grades six through eight uh, participated is shown in the table. So notice here, 7.3% uh, uh, participated in no activities, 